through this film, we have a lot of really great scenes and a lot of really cool shots in the film, but we don't get that just by handheld shots or, you know, by filming with a home video camera. We have lots of up-to-date, awesome, but affordable for students like us kind of pieces of equipment that we use. If we had been making this even just 10 years ago, and we're trying to make a movie that wasn't shot on film, it was just guaranteed to look terrible, like, to be shot on tape, and to be interlaced, and have all kinds of disgusting problems. We can now have cameras, fairly affordable cameras, with interchangeable lenses, and large sensors that give a nice filmic look in HD video. This is the Canon 6D. It is a full frame camera, meaning the digital sensor inside that takes the place of the film is the same size as a 35 millimeter piece of film. We are not shooting in the native uh, aspect ratio of 16.9. We are shooting in a more theatrical, uh, you know, so widescreen bars at the top and bottom. So this is our uh, second unit camera, the Canon EOS 70. It is what we would call a crop factor camera. The readings you get on the lens are actually multiplied uh, times 1.6 for this camera. Whereas the 60 has like a 35 millimeter sensor, this has like a 20, 22 millimeter sensor. So you can get some really long shots with this and that's its, that's its forte. Where to begin? Here is our assortment of lenses. Uh, we have the uh, 24 to 105 and it's a Canon L lens and you can tell because of this red line. And that's the, that's the top notch stuff. That's, that's my, my personal favorite. And that's, that's our workhorse lens. It does pretty much everything but low light. Uh, over here, we have a 70 to 300. And the cool thing about this is this zooms in quite a bit. Uh, and especially on the 70, the 300 turns into 40 millimeter. So that's quite an extensive zoom. It has built-in stabilization. A miraculous uh, marvel of mechanics. EFS lens. EFS lenses only work on crop sensor cameras like the 70. But the good thing about this is it goes to 18 millimeter. So that equates to about a 28 millimeter on the 70, but it lets the 70 get quite wide, which is difficult. But this is the 28 to 135. Very similar to our 24 to 105 from earlier. Uh, also has stabilization, great stabilization. The 85 millimeter uh, USM. An 85 millimeter, that's a portrait lens. So this does well in low light and it's zoomed in a little more than your eyes are, so you get some nice uh, smooth blur bokeh effect behind them. The Canon 50 millimeter. This is known uh, in some circles as the Plastic Fantastic, and it basically uh, replicates what the eye see. It does not zoomed in at all, it's not wide at all, it's just a normal lens or standard lens. It doesn't zoom, it really doesn't do anything, but it does normal perfectly. So what we have here is uh, one of our rigs. It's actually called the shoulder rig. It's the rig that we probably use the most uh, in the film. And uh, basically, you know, just two handlebars so you can get good stabilization. And this nice pad that goes against your shoulder so that you're able to be very mobile walking around and um, you can do all these tilts and dutch angles and stuff like that. It has this follow focus, which um, is attached with this uh, gear ring that attaches to the focus uh, ring on the lens and uh, it attaches to this knob. This will hard stop it so that you can determine your beginning and end position of focus if you have a very specific um, like couple objects that you're focusing from and to. Overall it's a very useful uh, rig. We use it all the time. It's better than just going on tripod because it has a little more life to it. You can be kind of shaky with it if you want or be kind of drifting back and forth and it really gives you the sense that you're there. All right, next up is our glide track or another term for it is a slider. And uh, what this basically does is on a mini, very portable contraption, gives you a dolly-like effect. Um, we just have this nice, very nice metal plate that uh, 
the contraption fits onto perfectly and able is literally sliding across. We have mounted a tripod head to the top of it so that we are able to not only slide it back and forth, but pan and tilt our shots um, so that we can, you know, get very specific with what we're capturing. It also has a plate on the bottom that you are able to mount on a tripod so that you not only is it on flat surfaces, but you can mount it on a tripod and do just a nice, pretty up high, but still sliding effect, so. Okay, this, this is the Glidecam 2000 Pro. Everybody's favorite thing in the world when it works and everybody hates it when they're trying to balance it. Uh, basically, you've got a gimbal and it's connected to this arm, so this swivels pretty freely. And then arm brace here to, so you don't destroy your wrist in the process, but basically you have a camera up top and it weighs however much it weighs depending on your camera. And then at the bottom you want a, I don't want to say an equal amount of rate, or weight, but a corresponding amount of weight that keeps the center of gravity not here or here, but right in the middle. You get smooth movements no matter where you go or what you do. Well, you've seen this rig before. This is our jib slash shoulder rig. This is my personal favorite. Whenever we are doing a second unit or secondary camera in a scene, uh, I'll be running it with this using a shoulder rig uh, when we have dual cam scenes. Last but not least is our very own Dolly. That's Bobby Dolly Dolly. The carpeted Dolly Dolly. The track here is made of PVC, and we also have these end caps, which have proven quite useful in stabilizing things. And then the carpet. That is, there is actual, actually, a purpose for the carpet, and that is friction. But the actual wheels are uh, roller blade wheels attached yeah. to a steel, I don't even know, steel L thing. L bar. Or, yeah. yeah something. <laughs> Best part about this is the price. The PVC costs like five bucks or eight bucks or something. The piece of wood we had lying around, the carpet we had lying around, uh, the wheels came off of a set of Blade Runner roller blades that were 50 cents. Uh, my mom found at a garage sale, so that worked nicely. And yeah. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Under the Hood. Hope you got an idea of all the cool stuff that we're working with. And um, yeah, maybe you guys can break down and buy this stuff yourself and you can do it yourself. It's awesome. And you know, just make something awesome like the hood. But don't make the hood. Okay, but don't make the hood. <laughs> Copyright. It's rolling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to this episode of Under the Hood. You're probably wondering, what is this? Well, it's a weight, but it's not for lifting. It's in fact, well, we'll get into that later. Mm -hmm. Bobby, what do you think this is? Is it just for twirling around in your hands? Uh, probably, but that's not what we use it for. It's not what we use it for. <laughs> is it for smoking a pipe? Uh, we've tried. It's an insane pipe. You'll probably watch this and assume that we You would use probably that. assume that that's what it's used for.